In my previous video on uh, stones and knives, there was another stone that I forgot to put into my collection. This one here was actually in the drawer for my kitchen knives, and it's quite a good stone. I use it for my kitchen knives because it does a really good job quickly, much better than any rat tail that you can get, even the ceramic ones. And it's actually quite good enough for reed knives. If you want a single stone uh, to last you the rest of your life and use nothing else, you can either get the diamond one or this one, which does actually a better job than the diamond stone to my taste. I don't know who makes it. In fact, I don't even remember why, where I bought it. It's probably from Lee Valley that I got it. But the only indication that I have, as you can see here, it's written American Hone Company from Moravia, Iowa. That's the only indication that I have left of what it is. And it's a two grit water stone, so I have a coarse side and a fine side. And unlike my other water stone, this one you don't soak it, you just spread water on top of it and the water does not infuse the stone at all. And uh, then you just sharpen the same way as normal. You put your knife on in a very controlled way so that your angle bevel is very well positioned and control the movement. And uh, the rough side will flatten out the bevel and then again on the other side just to get rid of the burrs. I don't even know where I bought this thing but it came with another little extra stone here and the purpose of this one is eventually all stones get scratched a little bit or they get uh, uh, dented or they get nicks uh, just from the metal hitting them or they can even get filled with uh, metal uh, filings and this one the purpose is to smooth all of that out. It wears out the top of the stone in a nice flat surface. It gets rid of the uh, the metal filings and it wears down so all the nicks eventually disappear. Now I have to speak about uh, this knife because many of you will, especially the uh, younger students, uh, or those who have less patience with uh, sharpening knives will be attracted to this class of knives. Um, this one is a vitri knife, it's a folding knife. Be very careful not to cut yourself when opening and closing. I bought this one certainly 25 years ago. I don't use it very much because myself I don't like it. The class of knife is that of a softer metal compared to the more expensive knives that you buy, which I prefer. The advantage with these uh, softer, cheaper knives is that they sharpen much more quickly than the expensive hard metal knife. Of course, with that, the disadvantage is that they also lose their edge more quickly. But there's another disadvantage, uh, which uh, not many references talk about. Um, when you're sharpening, the friction of the knife against the stone will do two things. It will wear away metal, but softer metal is a little bit plastic in as much that it will tend to fold over and upwards uh, to the side away from the stone. Now these little folds are what are called burrs. Um, with the softer metal, the burrs will tend to be bigger and uh, harder to get rid of. That is a problem because as they're big, the bigger they get, the more they tend to be flexible. And as they become flexible, you can't control them and they don't cut as well. The actual angle, the actual edge underneath the burr will be rounder, which means that you have less cutting power over your, your wood, uh, your cane, whatever it is you happen to be cutting. There is a way to minimize this. Again, I'm here on the rougher side of my stone. Now, with my controlled angle, my controlled motion, right now I'm creating burrs. I want to get rid of them. So I'll turn it around and I'll just raise a tiny little bit and give one stroke. This pretty well gets rid of all the burrs. However, it will also create new burrs going around on the other side. Being a soft metal, well, 
um, I don't want those either. So what I do is I turn to the, the, the finer grit of my stone and I repeat the same process in a very controlled manner. And eventually the burrs disappear completely. Now, after seeing my other videos, you might ask me why on earth am I putting the flat side on and then raising a little? And after having read my little booklet that's uh, available for free on my blog, you'll ask, isn't that going against the principle of maintaining your angle? Yes, it is. You're completely right. Now, you might be able to see here that I tried to put some hollows in it by hand using my grinding wheel, but this knife is very narrow, so there's just no room for a decent hollow in there. And on the flat side, it's nice and flat, but it's not perfectly flat. So if I do put it straight on, um, I'm actually not uh, guaranteed at all that the cutting edge will even touch the, uh, the stone. And it's the cutting edge that does need to touch the stone. That's the only way I can reduce the burrs and uh, get the teeth, uh, the microscopic teeth, uh, much finer and mo more controlled. So what I do is that behind, on the side behind, I do make a controlled bevel. And on the flat side, the side that goes forward, I just lift it a tiny little bit to ensure that the edge is touching, but no more. And I don't, I don't uh, hone this side very much at all. I work mostly on the bevel side. This will ensure that I have only one bevel side. And seeing as this is a softer metal to begin with, when I go back to my rough side and work on the uh, bevel on the rough uh, grit, then any roundness that I caused over here on the edge will probably be worn away. So these knives are less expensive, but of course they don't last very long either. Mine lasted me 25 years simply because I don't use it. Simple as that. But many people use them and many people like them. The uh, only difference is that um, you have to sharpen them more often. But again, they are easier to sharpen. It's all what you prefer.